Jovial Panda 2022. I'm debating on getting my first telly. Thinking of a Squire CV versus GNL tribute. Thoughts or, or opinions? I like them both. If it was me, I would buy the tribute. I love Squire stuff. I think the quality is there. Uh, maybe as good, if not better than GNL. Just because it says tribute on the headstock. Just like PRSSEs. Look, if you look behind me, I have two PRSs right here. One obviously was given to me by my buddy Nathan. Uh, that's essentially, you know, a, a beautiful dream guitar. And then there's an S2, pointing out an S2 down below. But right there is an SE, uh, Custom 22 SE. And I can tell you right now, I love that guitar. I mean, I love it. I play it all the time. Uh, the fact that it says Paul Reed Smith and just says SE, does SE means nothing to me. I don't care less. <laughs> First of all, what's funny about it is think about how, how this works. To me, when I look up PRS and if I, go, I look up a Paul Reed Smith core, I look at an S2 and I look at an SE, I look at them as all being Paul Reed Smiths, and then I go, but they're different subcategories. So I know the guy played, our person that played player played uh, the core, paid more. Maybe that matters. Maybe it doesn't. And I know there's refinement as I go up, right? Just kind of like what I picture in the BMWs, I would imagine. Better cup holders and maybe a bigger engine or something like that. Better performance, right? Better quality. I know part of our uh, ideology in guitar world is manufacturer origin. Those days are over. If you're still believing in that crap, I'm sorry. You're you're just not paying attention anymore. This whole hierarchy of where guitars are made is only connected now to resale values, not in the quality of how they can make instruments. That stuff pretty much ended the day affordable CNC machines were made. <laughs> you know what I mean? Once, like to me, here's my argument. I, I understand, you know, understand that there's quality differences in price categories, okay? So what I mean by is if somebody says, oh, an Indonesian guitar, and they hold it up, and they go, this guitar is not as good as this American-made guitar. And I go, okay, if, but what we don't want to look at is not where they're made. We want to look at what they were intended to be. So if you're saying a company goes to Indonesia and they make a guitar at a, and they say, let's make an affordable price point, and they start taking away options. And then we look at some American-made guitar, and it's loaded to the gill with options and, and fit and finish and time. And then you go, they're not the same. Well, they're not the same. But when you compare like a high-end main Indonesia guitar to a high-end main USA guitar, they're the same now. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> um, the CNC machines are the same. They can fit and finish the same. The time and grade's the same. And there's exceptions to all these rules, but we're generally saying the same. And that's why you're seeing like Strandberg for $2,600 made in Indonesia because Indonesia is the new Korea that's for sure, and quality-wise, and uh, and and that's what's great, to, you know, because you can still buy a really affordable, priced, good instruments out of Indonesia, and so the reason I say all that is because there's this, like this idea that, like I said, the Korean guitar is not as good as the American guitar. All that stuff is only true in in the regard of what they spec the guitars out. If they want the guitar to be as good, if they want a guitar to be the same, they can make it everywhere the same. Because again, they have the ability because they have the main thing that's making the guitars now are the machines. And the other thing that's advanced, which is why you got to let go of your old thinking is, is that the equipment that they're putting on the guitars is becoming standardized. There are as many high-end guitars now using the same components as lower-end guitars because that's the components they can get. I like using the Godot 510 as a perfect example. It's a bridge. It's in a $5,000 Sur and it's in a... $900 made, in well, now it's got to be $1,100, right? <laughs> Inflation. $1,100 made in Mexico uh, uh, Charvel. It's not a dig against anybody. It's not a praise to anybody. It's just saying they can put that bridge and everything. So let's argue for the sake of argument that the $1,000 Charvel and the $2,000 Ibanez AZ and the Sur guitar at whatever, $3,000 to five, they're all using the same bridge. We know that's, that's on par, okay? Now we're going to argue what? Paint? <laughs> How good they paint? Sure. Could the Sur shop, and again, I'm not picking on Sur, just because those guitars look similar. Um, they could have the same kind of paint. They could. They could be buying it from the same supplier, using the same paint guns, and having the same skill set. Wood in the body, if they're using all the same kind of woods, that's the same. So then we start talking about, well, what are we really talking about? Once once they start putting in, like Sur, one thing about them is they have their own pickups. That's really great. But we're going to talk about guitars like Nags, where Nags use mostly Seymour Duncans and Bare Knuckles in their in their guitars. So $5,000 Nags with Seymour Duncans. You can get the Ibanez with Seymour Duncans. You can get the Charvel with Seymour Duncans. So we know the pickups are equal in quality. See how this is? So then you go, okay, well, let's get the neck. Well, the necks, obviously, still made on CNC machines, but we can hand finish. There could be skilled labor in the more expensive guitars, for sure. 
like, like I said, think of it as categories, okay? Some guitars are less, again, I don't wanna say quality because that's not what I'm getting at. They have less feature sets, less, may, one of the features can be actually, believe it or not, a feature on an instrument could be how much hand time the instrument received before fit, fin, final shipping. That is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Um, and, and so you understand how big of a deal it is, is that when you go to a high-end guitar shop, I mean, a high-end guitar shop, uh, guitar, not, not repair shop, I mean, manufacturer, I'm talking about the best, the premium. If you look at how much hand time is put on the guitars, it's not hours. It's not like no one's spending two hours on your $5,000 guitar neck. <laughs> They're not doing that. They spend 30 minutes to an hour, maybe, sometimes 10 minutes. It depends, depends on the guitar and what it needs. So the point is they gotta move quickly. And so that tells you how fast they have to be when the guitar is $200, right? You're thinking for $200, you're getting somebody who works on your neck for 10 minutes. That's not true. They probably worked on like a couple passes and then it's gotta go, right? So that's what you're, that's what you're, you gotta deal with now. Uh, somebody's saying Eastman make fantastic guitars. Of course, like I said, really what you, what you learn is this. They can make a guitar anywhere on the planet Earth they want for the most part at any quality level they want. But what the real reality that we deal with now is, what is it worth later on the resale value? And let's be honest, there is, there is like I like the word cachet, there is cachet to an American-made Gibson guitar. There just is. It's iconic, people want it, rock stars have it. It's something, it's a it's a Rolex watch at this point. It's, it's something to show that you have. If that so matters to you, I don't know, <laughs> right? Uh, I said it on my, all my Gibson videos, I've said it. If you want a good guitar, just buy the Epiphone. If you want to own something <laughs> for that for that factor of resale value or, you know, like the, I call it the I have arrived, you know, like, oh, look, he's arrived. He's got that guitar. There's some there's some truth to that. Um, so back to the PRSs, that's why I like to say this. I like the SEs, I like the S2s, and I like the Course. I think they're all really good. I could argue that they are, are better as they go up, but it's not like crap to good. It's good to great. You know what I mean? It starts out really good. If you enjoyed this podcast clip, you can watch the entire episode by clicking the link in the description or streaming it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. You can also join it live every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Until next time, know your gear.